Hey guys, welcome to the review show. My name is Austin Furiosa, a Mad Max saga stars Anya Taylor Joy and Chris Hemsworth. Snatched from the green place of many mudgers, young Furiosa falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Demetrius. I haven't seen any of the Mad Max movies, not even the, I think, 2015 or 2017 um, Mad Max Fury Road. So if, like, if there was any reference to any of those ones, I would have no idea of those reference. And honestly, reference to me don't make a movie good, um, but some of those would have probably gone over my head if there was any reference to those. Um, but I've heard very good things about those films, and this one was getting very positive for reviews. And to be honest, I wasn't really a big fan of the trailers. The trailers kind of looked, from at least from the green screen, looked kind of fakey. Like it just, it just did not please me. I was like, okay, this movie, this movie looks like it's already dated for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just unfinished uh, special effects. And when I was watching it, I wasn't really thinking about the special effects. I'm like, oh, wow, this actually looks pretty good. I don't know what about the trailer. I, would, I just did not like the look of the trailer. For the other people that have not seen the other Mad Max uh, movies, um, how does this one interplay with those ones? This one tells the story of Furiosa, a girl who was abducted by a biker gang, I guess. A Western biker gang. That's how, I guess that's one way to call them. Um, and like you know, this takes place like after, like years after like this war, and now it's just basically a basically like an out war about uh, for uh, like I don't know fuel gas basically, and you know survival. It's basically telling the story from Furiosa's standpoint when she was young, and you basically see her grow up into this badass leader um, that she I guess she is known for from I think Mad Max. Theory Road. I think that's where she shows up. Maybe she shows up in the older ones by maybe like by any chance. I have no idea. Um, but it, this movie starts out with her pretty young. It's actually Anya Taylor Joy is hardly in the movie until like an hour in. Like she doesn't like she har is practically hardly in this movie until it gets to her standpoint. Um, but you know, uh, Ayla, Ayla, I have no idea how to say her name. Um, uh, who plays the younger version of Fur Furiosa does a pretty good job. Like she does a good job playing as like a, a I want to say a kid because she is a kid, but she does play. She plays the character very well, and like there's very believable scenes when there's someone that she cares about is about to die. A lot of kid actors can't pull this off, but she does a great job when it comes to, you know being scared and she does and she pulls that off very well sometimes kid actors can when they act scared it comes off very corny but she does a very good job this is probably one of the best kid actors i've seen um of all year but when she does grow up into anya's version of the character not a lot of uh, like talking in the movie from her character or even from both actors there's not a lot of talking that's a lot of like mm -mm, type of uh type of scenes where it's just silent and like she plays basically like somewhat of like a silent character throughout the film there's a couple scenes where she talks and next when and next there is definitely scenes of emotion and you definitely feel the heavy weight of the emotion in the character from the performance so it's good when when those are there but there you don't really get that much of a character i would say development there is a character development you do understand her uh basically her whole entire goal is to get back home. Like she was kidnapped at a very young age. Um, she lost someone very important to her. And um, and now she kind of wants revenge against Chris Hemsworth's character, who I kind of just, who I, who originally I honestly was not really a, a big fan of. I was like, okay, he kind of just sticks out like a Thor of thumb. But for the character that he's playing, the over the top type of character that he's somewhat playing, does really work in the film that you really just like don't like to do at all and and sometimes he can be somewhat amusing and somewhat um you can see him from like a human perspective at some point you know you find out that he has some of a past and like you know had a family of his own and so you can see like that humanity inside of him at some bits of the film but overall it's just a guy like i don't I want you to die. And that's pretty much all you really need to know about this movie. You don't really need to watch the end of the other Mad Max films. This is a prequel for a character that leads up to, I believe, Mad Max Fury Road, who, ha I believe, has somewhat of a form of an outcome. 
And I don't know, and this is kind of, I'm kind of going to ask you guys this question for the ones that have seen Mad Max or the other, or the other Mad Max films. Uh, does this movie ruin some, like, feel pointless to you? Like, I'm curious to hear it from you, from your guys' perspective, but from a person that has never seen the other films, I think this film does a pretty good job at telling a story. And, like, you kind of somewhat, I would like to say, multiple endings. Like, you get, this, this movie is told from a certain point of view, and it's not really um, a tr trustworthy narrator's point of view. Uh, that, if that's a, I don't, if that's a good way to put it. So I find this movie probably really working for people that have never seen the Mad Max movies to know what the outcome of the other characters are because I believe you do find out certain outcomes for certain characters that show up in this movie in the later ones. Um, but not knowing that you, a lot of stuff is like, oh, I hope I hope this character survives. Oh, I'm, I... And so, like, it does feel new in, the, in some way. Uh, and I don't really like prequels that much to movies I have seen because it's like, well, I don't want. Why do Why do we need this? Like, like for example, like Solo. Like those that that's the most pointless ass prequel um, to a, a Star Wars character ever. And it's like nothing but like reference to the other films. This one doesn't feel like that, mostly because I don't know the references. But this one does feel like it's telling its own story at the same time, if there was references to the other films, which I'm pretty sure there was. I'm going to give Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, a B plus. I really like the movie a lot. The only really big negative I have with it is some lack of character development with Furiosa's character since she doesn't really talk that much in the film, and that the movie can feel a little bit long. I think this movie could have done less than 15 minutes um, of the runtime, but overall, I really enjoyed the film. I highly recommend checking out this weekend if you have nothing else to see. Anyway, guys, thanks for very much for watching. Like always, I'll see you guys next review. Bye, guys.